Knobox Dance presents Dance Behind the Screen. Process production and social media. Hey members, welcome to our podcast. We are Knobox Dance, a social media-based company. We strive to say no to the box. We connect interdisciplinary art, technology and artists to re-envision the process of art making and sharing. Hello everyone again, I'm Yujin Choi, your host of today's episode. This episode, I had great conversation with the artistic director Inue of Inue Dance Company. I first saw her dance video on Instagram and I was just so fascinated about her movement language um, and the work she created. And I thought we need to invite her to our episode because I really wanted to know more about her. While having conversation with her, I realized that movement style is a focal technique, which means Chinese folk dance and contemporary dance combined technique that she created. So you can listen more about that. Also, as you can listen through the trailer you posted on No Box Dance Facebook page, she shared the differences living as an artistic director and a choreographer. Also, where does she get inspiration from, her rehearsal process, and tips for emerging choreographers. To briefly introduce about her bio, Inue was the winner of Hubbard Street Dance Chicago 2015 International Commissioning Project, winner of the 2015 Ballet X Choreographic Fellowship, and winner of Northwest Dance Project's 5th Annual Pretty Creatives International Choreographic Competition in 2013. Also, her dance company, Inue Dance Company, is a New York City based nonprofit contemporary dance ensemble composed of freelance dance artists who collaborate with Inue in creating and performing choreographic works. The company has presented works at dance festivals such as Jacob's Pillow, Dance Festival Inside Out, New York International Fringe P- Festival, The Wave Rising Series, among others. Are you ready to listen to her voice? Here we go. Hi, everyone. It's my pleasure to talking to you. Thank you. Um, my first question is, can you briefly walk our audience through your career path? How would you describe yourself? Mm, career path. That's kind of <laughs> a long answer right there. I try to shrink it. Um, well, I study like I study dance in the more professional way mm-hmm. uh, back in Shanghai. So I went to Shanghai Dance School. It's a, a professional dance school that trains dancers in the in the, a, a pretty aggressive way, like a boarding school. I studied for six years Chinese classical dance, ballet technique, Chinese folk dance. So that everything that a, a Chinese dancer required to take as a mm-hmm. young dancer. So when I graduate, that's when I start being introduced the opportunity to say, okay, if you go to college, here's this modern dance you can take. So that sort of put me on the path of this whole, I would love to do contemporary modern dance. From that moment, I, mm-hmm. I'm i a bit like, let's put classical dance on hold. So I'm, I'm very passionate about uh, discovering something new. And then mm-hmm. that, so when I, when I decided to go to New York, it's a, out of almost like a frustration in, in China. Like there's not much modern dance going on. And especially in terms of career wise, like what All you right. do after you study for this long, graduate, there's no company at that time. And then it's not much like, oh, we are promoting all the freelance dancer in China to build your career. So mm-hmm. I come to you, I came to um, New York City in 2006. Also for school, I went to NYU, Tisch. After the program, I I see I just see myself stay, like to explore more. So I I, I stay, kind of join this whole large community of freelance dancer, freelance artists, just doing work like on the side, pick things up, and then mm-hmm. slowly. In the in in the West, slowly, like, <laughs> um, I start choreograph. Like I did a few freelance performance. It wasn't it wasn't for me like very satisfying experience. I feel like I really want to make dance. I want to make dance. I want to do to mm-hmm. begin with is like 
I want to take, I want to, I still want to perform very much. So I, mm-hmm. when I choreograph, of course I can put myself in it. So then this, this kind of, so once that moment has started, so I kind of just, let's find any chance I have to create a, a dance, submit it to the festival. And then sort of one festival, one competition, and then you, you start building till now. So I still feel even even till this day, I'm kind of doing the same thing right. but because the the year has put it in the work. It mm-hmm. feels growed uh, a lot in terms of quality and quantity. So right, right, right. I'm pretty much doing this um, choreo- yeah, choreograph uh, huh. my own work. Yeah. Cool. Well, let's go back. What was the trigger point that you want to, I want to move to New York or I want to learn contemporary dance? Mm, um, It is the, it's, it's that point when I finish college. So Mm -hmm. I got undergrads in dance and then the, the, the option present presented to me at that time is uh, getting married <laughs> mm-hmm. in China, of course, mm-hmm. getting married or continue study, like study more, like because more, the, yeah. just because just the, the whole, am I going to join the professional dance company in China? It's very, it wasn't very encouraged or like certain, like, it's not like I will go and here you have your perform- mm-hmm. dancing career. Um, due to my own physical sort of limitation, like I'm considered a bit short in terms mm-hmm. of the height in the performance scene in China. Mm-hmm. So, so there's a, it's just a combination of many things. It drives me to the decision. If, okay, if dance is not happening here, where else? Like, like what other, other opportunities? What, yeah. Right. I'm not even thinking all other city. I'm literally like, which other country? <laughs> <laughs> but of course, at that time, like New York City is like, if you think about like um, America, like US, New York City, is, right, like, right. I want to go to New York. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I do have pretty good English at that time. So I, mm-hmm. I pick a lot of time, I study myself. That's so great. That prob- I'm still that struggling. Probably, <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm learning like this, the some couple words I have like, I can't pronounce really well <laughs> but yeah so it's a combination of things I, I i see the opportunity i i like it wasn't like oh go to us there's no way like impossible you know so okay. i see the possibility and then i sort of take that chance you are listening to now box dance could you break down a day as an artist artistic director and choreographer of your company hmm that a bit uh, is a it's a different day day to day because right. we are uh, as of now the company is a sort of a project based company mm-hmm. like just due to the reality of the company is in New York City there's a there's not much it's not like flooded funding <laughs> to support it so I'm pretty much support. The, the operation of the group from mm-hmm. myself. So from mm-hmm. my teaching and luckily from my commission work, presentation and things like that. So I was able to at least get um, the company sort of running in the way we have uh, productions. I try right, to right. do it once mm-hmm. in a year or a year and a half. When we do that, that's when the company schedule kick in. So, so at this time right now, I am kind of flying solo myself just to mm-hmm. build a lot of reputation in terms of, okay, I'm involved in commission. So I try to promote it in the way on social media, actually a lot uh, mm-hmm. as, a, as a part of the company uh, function. But this is right now during the low season when there's no, scheduled pr- production performance mm-hmm. and then so we're trying to plan next year 2020 to do a production in fall like somewhere september and then by by scheduling that then there's a sequence of action will happen like for example summer intensive residency right. schedule rehearsal and then you have production 
and then you have show. So, so the day to day during that time, it will be very much rehearse. I try to do five days a week. And on top of that, you have the marketing you need to do, right? Um, planning, you know, the all the artistic elements of the show. Right. So do you that, also, sorry. No, like, yes, that's pretty much the whole picture of <laughs> the, the running. Cool. Do you also open call for audition for dancers? Uh, sometimes, sometimes. Mm. So, uh, because I, um, have, I would say pretty, um, how to say personal, unique kind of signature style. Mm. So is it, is it for me, is it easier to have like I teach in the regular base. So it gave dancers who doesn't know my work or want to know my work Mm -hmm. or I don't know then to come take classes and then to see if this match like works. Yeah. Your movement styles. Right. So because of that, I, I no longer doing like nationwide call for audition because I usually hire a handful of people. So it's not, here's a, a big production for many, many dancers. So mm-hmm. I like to work with people has one expressed interest just in their own way, not just mm-hmm. simply because he is a job. Right, and then right. two, and I like that time, I can sort of see them multiple times doing a setting that is not stressful. Like they come to the class, then they come again. And then if I start seeing people I'm interested, I always keep them in my radar. Like, like I, I want to know who they mm-hmm. are. Mm-hmm. Send me a message. So overall, people coming to my production, they, we know each other in some capacity, like in, introduced by friend, not know that. I did audition last time. It will kind of end up in the same way. You start seeing the people you have seen because just the, just the audition, the time is really short to really know how someone perform. Mm-hmm. Like it, it just requires more of the interaction. You know? Right. It's not just one time audition. It's you not, just see that. Exactly. This. Exactly. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay. You're also the winner of Hubbard Street Dance Chicago 2015 International Commissioning Project in 2000. 15 Ballet X Choreography Fellowship, Northwest Dance Project 5th and your Pretty Creatives International Choreographic Competition in 2013. Wow, congratulations again. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Could you share more about these awards and your experience receiving them? Yes. Like looking at a time right now, wow, it's like so many years ago. <laughs> um, I, the, the, the pretty excited, like, Award, of course, is they are very exciting. So especially if trace back the time, this is kind of time when I um, sort of started choreograph pretty seriously in the way. Mm-hmm. So then it, it, it does give you like confidence, be like, oh, great. If I can do it, then I, I should be able to. OK, now. But the, the, the award, I feel it gave me a platform. Like if you say, I have been choreographed the dance, dance since 2010, let's say. Mm-hmm. Once you receive, the first award I receive is Northwest Dance Project in 2013. Mm-hmm. So once you, once your name was on such list, like, hey, congratulations, here's the winner. And this is, you know, her work. It gave everybody that follows the company or follows the competition a elevated sense like okay let's look at her work with Mm. more seriousness Mm -hmm. so it's not like I have not been choreographed before but the recognition is almost like for whatever reason this piece you submitted it attracts people's attention Mm, so so it does give you that sense wow something something important something interesting happening to Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. a choreographer and then it gave me this platform for emerging choreographer and then starting from that you almost like when you start one important link and then people's like other things kind of happen because of that I do I do think that is one professional commission I did is to kickstart my other um, career path like 
And right. then I start doing the other commission. They are all important. And then you start working with company with different setting. Then, of course, in like Harbor Street and Bali X, they are more balletic. They are more in the traditional, like like there's a there's a lot of classical technique versus mm -hmm. here's the contemporary company. So it gave me the chance I will not normally have myself to work with the people dancing for those companies. Like, and then this is for the company also. So when they set up this competition, then they if at that time, like <laughs> some someone new, like a young choreographer saying, right. hey, work with this company. Uh, just see how it goes. So for that, it's, I think it's very, very important mm. in my career to have those starting points to build what I want to build right now. Yeah, totally. Yeah. But this, um, did these awards change or affect your life as an artist, like your choreographic voice, for instance? Um, like we said, you were commissioned by all these widely recognized companies, for instance, uh, Pennsylvania Ballet, Limon Dance Company, Bruce Wood mm -hmm. Dance, Boston Dance Theater, among others. So we talked about it gives you more confidence and then mm -hmm. other people start to give you more attention, recognition as well. But how about your choreographic voice or other things? Mm -hmm. I think it's, it, definitely, it, it definitely affects artists in like conscious way or subconscious way like for example confidence is definitely something you can feel it but more like right. subconscious like you feel i will i will not i will not question the decision i made as much mm -hmm. now with with the with the the commission and then competition under my belt so something like that but right. as a as an artist explore their own work it gave you a wider range of dancers. And then when you when you mm. when you choreograph on commission, you do have to think about what the company wants as well. Like you you start combine this uh, at, at least speaking for myself, you start combine the ex expectation of yourself being like, okay, what you want to do in this commission. At the same time, I always do think about, okay, why. I'm in this company, like why I'm in the program in this company, like what mm. they, what they looking at me say, I may have something to bring to them. So when I choreograph rather than just stubbornly keeping what I, I will do, I, I try to be a little bit flexible. So just see where right. my That's choreographic true. voice will change depends on the different environment or different pressure I'm under or different expectations. So it, it kind of, I'm using that in the good way, not like, oh, they try to change my art, you know, mm -hmm. but it gave me a support. Exactly. Yeah. Give me an opportunity to see what could possibly happen in this new setting. Like, is there something I never know I would do? So this is the, this is probably the major thing, all this awarded commission that affects my life as artists, like mm -hmm. my creation is that you, you do get to work with people. You didn't select them in the first place. Like you, I didn't hire the dancer for the company, but now I'm working with them based on their very unique ability. And I have to apply my art, my voice onto them. So there mm. is a very interesting communication going on. Yeah, definitely. Yes. Cool. Hopefully that happened to me too in the future. <laughs> yes. Well, I wish. I'm sure. <laughs> Thank you. Don't forget to say no to the box. Cool. Now I'm more curious about the process of art making. Mm -hmm. um, where do you get, you might hate this question because I hate this question when I <laughs> hear from my student, but where do what you is? get inspiration from? Mm, um, my inspiration. I will say is coming from the movement. Like mm -hmm. it is kind of hard. It's, it's easy to explain, but at the same time, harder to understand in a way. Like I'm very much physical movement based choreographer. Right. Like I am interested in the move, like the movement. Like if I go see a dance, I wouldn't, I'm not, 
first, I'm not checking the program for what the piece is about. I'm not mm-hmm. checking the narrative, the story behind it. I want to see how the movement is conducted, how the mm-hmm. movement is created, and how they flow together. So, so there is a pure art, like the, the sense of satisfaction, just to see yeah, how the, the movement, movement was was done, how the movement mm-hmm. itself. Yes. So with myself, even with my company, it starts from there, and then. I was, I'm passionate enough to feel I would like to have a technique under the company. So I want to create a movement style that has my signature and my voice in it. So, Mm -hmm. so, so this too kind of comes um, together in the way. So because I love movement, so many of my piece is coming from the inspiration to make new movement, like a oh, new combination, cool. new mm-hmm. style. And then because of that, I want to have, I want to make this style known by the world, like to have a very, um, have something people can relate to and then can, can, can know like this is, oh, this is. In U.S. choreography is yeah, it's in U.S. style, yeah, exactly. So it has her move. So I title the technique "Foco Technique." Yes, so it has it has question. that inspiration <laughs> <laughs> from the from my background. So so when I make a piece, mm-hmm. I think a lot about how the movement will be presented and performed, and then through the movement, it usually. You usually go into a stage. So when you start in the studio, you say, let's make some moves. Let's play around. So then you generally go into the stage. The movement suggested itself. What kind of mood you are going to? Like what kind of narrative behind the gesture? Mm. And then, and then I take that direction and then go from there to somewhere else. But it usually starts in the pretty open, slow, vague place. Yeah. Cool. That's really interesting in here because in my dance tendency class, we talked about what is current trend in dance field. And normally mm-hmm. students talked about interdisciplinary art, multimedia, um, performing mm-hmm. arts. So we use a lot of um choreographic elements beyond movement, but sometimes we forget the essential of dance performance for me is body self, movement itself. Yes. So it's really interesting to hear um, yeah. your answer about that one. Since you mentioned about focal technique, um, can you explain more about focal technique and those are Chinese classical folk dance, classical ballet technique and contemporary dance um, effect creating this technique? Yes, I think Technically, I feel everything I have learned in the past are affecting mm-hmm, creating mm-hmm. this because the technique, technically, is <laughs> still is still being created, created. Right. So it wasn't like done. Like this is what it is. So we are actually in the mid, in the middle, beginning, middle of making this a technique. So everything yeah. I feel useful, I start kind of put into the folder. So the tech, so FOCO technique originally is folk contemporary dance. Oh, style. Okay. Mm-hmm. So it's a FOCO folk contemporary. It started with my uh, fascination in ch- uh, how to combine Chinese folk dance with contemporary. Mm-hmm. So, so folk dance comes uh, very strong in the beginning. Uh, after after developing it and try to explain what it is, and I mm-hmm. realized one thing I sort of ignored or doesn't really consciously aware is my Chinese classical dance background. Mm-hmm. So when people think about when I think about that, it comes so natural to me. Like it's not even something I need to mention. But but then I realized for dance for people who don't know my work or they are coming from a different country. If I say Chinese classical dance, they will be a they will have no idea what that is. Mm-hmm. So then that's when I start putting a little bit more explanation in terms of, okay, folk dance is not just limit in folk in its own field. Right. It does, so for me, it has heavy trace of classical dance, 
folk dance, ballet, other Chinese element that was in the classical dance, such as tai chi, martial art, kung fu, all that. So, mm-hmm. so I feel like that is a quite of a fusion of everything in Chinese.、Mm-hmm. And then when I combine with c- contemporary dance, then you create I create this hybrid of dance language that has the Asian dance element, is especially Chinese dance, folk dance, and with contemporary. Cool. And yeah, can you explain more about Chinese classical folk dance? Like, what are the movement elements we can picture? The folk dance it has a, a many、uh, type of dance because is the the there's a ethnic group in、right. China. They each have its own unique cultural based dance. So in their own way. So it's so many. And then as a student in、uh, dance school, professional dance school,、mm-hmm. you select you select a field. We call we we consider major folk dance that represent the cultural, or because they have a larger population, you know. Because if you go into the field, it really have many different branches of folk dance people do, and some dance is like performed only by a small village. So with the with the type of folk dance I do, I was very、um, interested in Mongolian and Tibetan、mm. dance. So those two for me, it re- for me it has it has it has a elements that related to contemporary dance very well. I like the movement、uh, in torso, like large arm movement,、mm-hmm. expanded shoulder blades, and a, like grounded feet. Yes, I so, saw the video. So That's that, so beautiful. <laughs> thank you. Yes. So those style you you don't see them in. Other folk dance,、mm. like if they are coming from more of a city area with a with large population, so the dance changes based on the cultural environment. So I pick Mongolian Tibetan dance specifically, pure based on their、um, this the style of how they perform,、mm-hmm. and then the footwork they have, and then the music also. I never been to M- M- Mongolia, and that <laughs> I wish I I feel like that would be my next stage of research. research I、yeah. really want to know. I I need to go. It's really interesting because currently I've been teaching Korean dance and contemporary dance at the university I'm working now.、Mm-hmm. Separate, different two courses, but I always see the possibilities and eager to research more about how those two dance forms, the elements、mm-hmm. in those dance forms, could be combined,、mm-hmm. and then teach my own technique,、um, not、mm-hmm. just borrow somebody somebody's technique. So it's really、right. interesting. Have you ever think about giving certification with this technique? Uh, yes, uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> However, the process to get there, of course, yeah, is something as like then I have to research more. So I'm in the first stage, which try to get you know the trademark of title, and then try to establish what it is it, on paper and on right. It's complicated. On, exact first <laughs> in my head, <laughs> and then has to be on paper. Mm-hmm. Because the amount of time, if you want to tell people what it is, and that is very hard from the different perspectives. Like I'm speaking it as choreographer, someone listening as a dancer or as an audience. So it,、right. it could have completely different interpretation of、That's、what that、true. is.、Mm-hmm. So the so the work need to be done <laughs> <laughs> a lot.、Mm-hmm. Yes, hopefully but, in the future.、Yeah. But I do think that could, that is my Uh, the decision, a、uh, decision direction where I'm. Yeah, I will really.、Go. Yeah,、mm-hmm. cool. Create, discuss, and advocate for art. No box dance. For those listening who are interested in starting their own dance company as a choreographer,、mm-hmm. especially emerging choreographer, what advice do you have? Hmm, I have so many, but <laughs> <laughs> I will pick the most important. I think as my experience starting. If I have way to go back in time to do it all over again, 
I feel I will understand a little bit better in the difference being a director of the company versus being a choreographer. Of the, I, feel, I think people mm. want to be like when they start their own company, they, the first drive is never about, I would like to manage five people <laughs> of their schedule and of my own marketing strategy and management and administration. Like it always comes to them be like, oh, I want to be choreographer. Right. So now, exactly. Now after I kind of did two of them, then you realize there are two different jobs. It requires so much like, quantity you will never think you have like like for instance if someone just want to be choreographed you are dealing with you make you make peace happen you gather five people you work with them you have a work right, right. if you want your home company then it's different because whole different company, stories whole yeah. different story because <laughs> the company contains so much more than sometimes just you require things. more yeah like more administrative job isn't it very than much yeah, exactly. You need to, you really need to know how to manage people, right. to be manage a company than just to choreograph. So people need to have that sort of thought first and like what they really want to do before they say, I'm just going to start, I'm just going to start a company because then comes with that is the responsibility. And then you have to manage your time and stress and other things on top of it. I have enjoyed your behind the scenes Instagram videos and pictures of rehearsals, performances, classes, and more. Um, how do you decide what to share? And you manage Instagram, right? I manage my own. I have two accounts right mm-hmm. now. So I started with my personal account, just as everybody else. <laughs> and mm-hmm. then when when the company start growing, and then when my personal account start growing, then I mm-hmm. feel now is the time to introduce a company account. So mm-hmm. people follow me could be also interested in the company. company so, yeah. Yes. So there's a, there's a bit, so I manage the two. So I try to, I try to see what is, so first, first I, I try to judge by the, by the post I want to do, if they are artistically relevant mm-hmm. or it reflects certain personality I want audience to see especially if it's behind the scene or rehearsal like right. rather than rather than choose to show a clip of dancer dress dressing like, <laughs> like <laughs> or talking chatting so so you have to kind of decide oh what is relevant for this time for this post like it's if we're introduced if we are exchange choreographic idea concept oh that could be very interesting to see like dancers doing warm-up stretching get frustrated with the movement even that is relevant to show right so so as Mm -hmm. a as a someone both manage the online persona and in reality running the rehearsal you don't want to constantly tell people to say hold i'm gonna take a photo you know (laughs) so you want to make that as smooth as possible in the real part of life the process, time, yeah, part yeah. of time, but then also know, keep the record of your own online. So it's almost two life you are living. So because you do feel like you, I do feel the need to keep audience informed and engaged, so people feel like there are things going, you know. And then mm, when you when we do a production, you yeah. want to introduce that sense of things are active. That's you. You start to see. Okay, what is the best to represent that hour in the rehearsal? That is four hours long. You are listening to Now Box Dance, mm. rather than showing the whole thing. Like, like right. Pick, pick and choose. Uh-huh. Yeah. The most interesting. The most part interesting. Of yes. Cool. If you had to share one piece of advice for emerging artists, because I guess most of us using social media what would it be your advice uh i've i didn't i didn't pay this much attention <laughs> many years ago i feel like now with the it just the, with the development of technology like 
It、right. will all goes to one direction. Is it will be more and more. So so I start paying more attention about the the front, like the so when people go into a page, what do you want people? To see, so I I will encourage people to editing their social media, either、mm -hmm. Facebook,、mm -hmm. Instagram, Twitter, but website same like with the same seriousness you will have to editing your bio, resume, headshot,、right. like, like real, like because people now just choose pick and you don't you actually don't know what people pick and choose to go see if they see your name mentioned. They want to choose. They want to spend five minutes to do a research on you. You、yeah. have to. You you can say my website is great, but everything else I'm just not gonna do. So so if you are living or you want to in, involve heavily in the social media world, you have to take time to pick the right photo. Yeah, I'm a professional. The right、way. sentence.、Mm -hmm. Design it to see how other people design their their page. And do that, like that. You have to put that,、um, put some time and thought to it. So this is not something you will tell people. Like, add your resume and your social media back. <laughs> but <laughs> everything but I think is, is yeah, it's important now. And then the footage, right? So the Instagram have this one minute, and now you can do the TV that it allow you to show、right. more. <laughs> Same, like if if things you will not include it in the reel. Where you show the director, you also don't put it in your professional Instagram. Like if someone wants to, sh you 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 don't put too much a failed video or video with a bad quality, right? On the social media, and then people feel like, oh, it's just for fun, you know? Like <laughs> this is my way to share. Yes, this is your way to share with your friend. But if you if you are Putting the perspective, like okay, I want to share this with the world. You have to have the right message to justify why this video you choose. Like、yes. I, I, like I find myself sometimes if I have a dancer interested after they take a class, introduce himself. The first thing I will do is to look on social media. I did that too. What, <laughs> exactly right. What <laughs> other things they do? What kind of movement quality? I want to know.、Uh -huh. That's you may look you may look、yeah. good in this class for this hour. Do you look good in other classes in other、mm -hmm. hour? So there's many things. Like, can you imagine in that one five minutes I do the research <laughs> with the many many bad videos? It will it will change how I view you as a professional, right? You know, player in this in this world. So、I、it is important. Check, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I need to check my Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Like go at it right now, <laughs> right? I, I constantly、That's, update、yeah. to keep it just just to keep it fresh, keep it updated. I love the、know? color pattern too in your Instagram. Oh, all the videos. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it's really interesting. Yeah, it's really great advice because, like you said, people just Google your name and then first things pops up, and then they just evaluate your career. You know? Yeah, I feel people like want it, want it or not, it is there. Like unless、right. you choose to, it's a decision. Also, if you choose to not be part of this, then same same work has to put into it. You have to clear out your information online because one thing you cannot、um, you what what you don't want to happen is like people start making the wrong decision or judgment based on the things you personally presented online、right. to the world. <laughs> you know, so you want to like. Clear this out. Just add it a little bit, you know. Right, that's true. Cool.、Um, as we wrap up, we have our flash four portion where we ask all、mm. our guests to answer four questions in a flash. Are you ready? In a flash. Oh my god. <laughs> flash four. I don't know. Sure. <laughs> Let's do it. Pressure.、Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. If you had to recommend a resource to our audience, what would it be? Hmm. I would say. YouTube channel, books,、mm -hmm. movie, movies. Yeah, get inspired. Inspired. Movie, movie, music. Oh, now like the flash just keep flashing. <laughs> Listen to music, watch movie, read books. Yeah, visual、cool. inspiration. Yeah. 
Nice. Number two, what was the first dance you saw? Ooh, that one has to be Chinese dance, which, <laughs> I, don't, which I don't remember. Um, yeah, it has to be one of the dance produced in China on TV, like big celebration, unison dancing, a lot of people. <laughs> that. Mm-hmm. Cool. Do you think social media has a positive influence on the dance world? Oh, yes or no? Oh, yes or no question. I would say yes, without cool. further expense. But yes. <laughs> <laughs> what is your favorite social media platform? Favorite? I can't really say favorite, but in comparison, Instagram. Instagram. Okay, cool. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time and sharing your thoughts with our audience. Can you please share with our listeners your social media handles, website, and how they can stay connected with you? Yes. You want me to say it right now? Yes, please. I say. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I would encourage people to follow me on Instagram. So I have two accounts, as I mentioned. So my personal account is at the in yue, the T H E Y I N Y U E. Then, of course, my company account is at Y Y D C I N C. So I'm sharing content in both account d- divided by personal interest oriented or company business. Um, I also have Facebook. Of course, <laughs> I have two account, personal account, just my name. And then company account is where more official company business will go. Audition, post, production, teaching schedule, da da da, is at YY Dance Company on Facebook. Yeah. If you are, cool. in, if you are interested to see my video, like some dance, you can, the best way, you can go to my website, y, uh, yydc.org. And then in the repertory, then you can see the link. Then it will take you to Vimeo. So if you have the website, then you will have the Vimeo um, link as well. Yeah. Cool. Thank you so much. Yay. Thank you. Thanks for taking your time to tune into Dance Behind the Screen, a bi-monthly interview series where we go behind the screen to question process, product, and social media. Be sure to follow us on social media, at KNOW Box Dance. See you next time and don't forget to say no to the box.